All right, segment seven. This one is just something else. This one, I I just don't even know how to describe segment seven to you because it is incredible. It is difficult. It is frustrating. It is everything you can imagine. I would think of this maybe something akin to like having a really cool vintage sports car that when it's when it's great, it's amazing. When it's not, it's really tough, right? And so here we've got 13.2 miles. It's 3,700 feet up and 3,100 feet down. And that's if you're going from the Gold Hill Trailhead in Breckenridge toward Copper Mountain. Of course, you'd switch those numbers if you were going the other way. What's wor- what, what you need to know about this segment is that it's just one climb and one descent. And the climb from Gold Hill is pretty steady for the most part. There's a little dip, but for the most part, it's straight up. And then it's going to walk along the 10 mile range and then it's going to fall right back down into that um, into that section over there by Copper Mountain. And so it's at the top of that ridge line. It's absolutely stunning. It's it's just one of the most beautiful sections. Um, Let's actually take a look over at that and I'll show you here what we're talking about in segment seven. You're going to see a lot of that um, 10 mile range. And what I want you to pay attention to here is the exposure. And what I can tell you is that every single time I've been over this segment later in the day or even in the afternoon, I've had to wait out a storm or I've got caught in a storm at the very top. Um, That's sort of like that's where I met um, Elderberry as well. And we both had to race off of the mountain to avoid a storm. So it's worth knowing that there's a lot of exposure there. I met some CDT hikers while I was waiting out a storm once and they said as they crossed, their hair was standing on end from the Um, electrical charge. So they were very much in danger at that point. So certainly be aware of that. It's not something to be afraid of, especially because you'll have plenty of opportunity to see the storms coming. So you have plenty of opportunity to grab cover. So don't be afraid of it. Just know that it is an area that you are particularly exposed. And because of the geography, the the storms tend to collect over that ridgeline. So let's take a peek here at segment seven and kind of get a feel for what we're what we're getting into in this segment here. So here you'll notice that there's a lot more exposure early in this segment. There is a little bit of a burn zone. Um, very much the sun will come straight down. And then you get, this is one of my favorite spots here. That little section of trail is right before you hop up on the 10 mile range. And you'll know when you're about to leave tree line. This section here, pay specific attention to it. If the storms are pushing in, this is the spot where I'd recommend turning around and grabbing cover because you're about to end up right up here, which is spectacular. As you can see, it's really fun hiking, really beautiful. You can see Breckenridge down there in the in the left-hand corner. And then here you can see Breckenridge off to the left. You can see Wayne and you walk this razor's edge and I just can't tell you how cool it is. It's just so neat to be up there, especially if the storms aren't pushing in. And then you see Copper Mountain there. Now, what you need to know here is that after this, you really start diving down and the descent is rapid, 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 rapid. It's really, really steep. Um, You can kind of see it here, but it's kind of hard to make out in the camera, but it's absolutely just a knee breaker by way of the steepness. It's, uh, It's really tough. And so just make sure that um, if you do decide to slack pack it, we're going to address this in a second, um, this idea of slack packing, because it's one of my new tips, spoiler alert. Um, But here, you know, you will definitely start seeing some folks who try to go the other direction through here. And it, it can be real tough. And I did that last year and it was very, very hard. So let's go ahead and go over the tips that I had last, uh, the last time I made a tip video for this segment. Talked about shooting for Leadville in two days. And what I mentioned here is that, you know, it's 39 miles from Breckenridge to Leadville. So if you pare down your pack, if you know you're only going out for two days, you can really reduce the food you're carrying. It's lots and lots of water in this segment. And so you'll be able, and the following segment, so you'll be able to really zip through pretty quickly. And so consider going to Leadville in two days. And if you do that, it's a great opportunity when you're in Breckenridge to go ahead and set up a space in a hostel or a shuttle camp just before tree line. That's a really great idea because there's some great camping just before tree line near water in the pack. And so you can jump right over that and kind of make your way down into Copper Mountain for breakfast, which is a really good way to do that. And then this is a really great time to start learning your elevation charts. So pay attention to how they work or how your elevation gain happens and what what you consider difficult. I've mentioned before, I consider 
anything over 300 feet of gain in a mile to be challenging and anything beyond that to be moving into very challenging territory. So figure out what that number is for you. And this is a great segment for it because it is very much for the most part, straight up and straight down. And so you can kind of figure out a gauge for yourself here. And that's a good opportunity to kind of sort some of those numbers out and pay attention to that as you go. So let's talk about some of these newer tips. And we've had a couple of folks here. Um, we've had a couple of folks here who have already kind of mentioned this one. And um, let's talk about first, actually, starting early or camp early. So I've mentioned here the storms kind of roll in. And that one is just, a, you know, the storms rolling in are really important to keep an eye out for here because I've seen people who've gotten so shaken up by the storms here that they've discontinued their hike. I had a couple of folks I hiked with a couple of years ago who quit hiking after getting caught in a storm up there and they were pretty scared. I mean, it was scary to be up there. So starting early will help you because you'll avoid a lot of that sun exposure and then planning to camp early if you don't start early is a great plan too. So stay below tree line, camp out. And that's also really cool because when you get to the top, you'll often in the morning there see a bunch of people who are um, hang gliding off of that ridge line down into the Copper Mountain Valley, which is really cool to see. So if you start hiking in the morning and see hang gliders over that valley, that's pretty neat. Um, so it's just worth knowing that you can either start really early, meaning eight o'clock or earlier, or camp early, meaning maybe two, three o'clock in the afternoon if you start at say 10 o'clock in the morning, but know that it's very hot in that segment until you get to that tree line section because of the burn. So let's talk here. We've got another one um, coming up. We've had both, um, both Mad Hippies and um, Reclaiming Ruth have alluded to this already. And it's the idea that you can slack pack the section. Slack packing for those of you who don't know is basically when you leave your backpack somewhere hotel, hostel, your car, uh, with your parents, with your shuttle, whatever. And then you hike the section with just food and snacks. So you plan to stay off trail that day. It's kind of like day hiking, but the difference is you're doing it on a longer hike. So slack packing is not cheating. I don't think that's a big deal. Um, I did this a couple of times in the past and it's really a nice way to go because of that climb. Also because of the uh, the risk with storms and exposure. So getting up over that section as quickly as possible makes a lot of sense to me. Basically what you do is you take the summit stage shuttle and you take it to the Gold Hill Trailhead and then you hike the section and get to Copper and you hop back on the free summit stage shuttle and take it back over to Frisco and then catch the bus back to Gold Hill. Unless you're staying in Frisco, then you just stay in Frisco. But it's a really nice way to go. So what you would basically need to do is rent a hotel room or a hostel bed for two nights and then do that section and leave your bag and just carry your necessities from there. I love this plan. I think it's a really nice way to do a tougher segment because it is, a, it is one of the harder segments. When you're at this point, if you're trying to figure out what I mean by difficulty, I would liken this to segment four, especially the start of segment four. It's very similar to me in terms of that climb as well. Now, when you get to the end of the segment there, um, the segment is actually kind of at copper. It's a weird one because you'll come to a highway, but the segment doesn't really end there. It ends kind of two miles in kind of randomly at copper. So that's why this tip kind of is included here. If you get to copper later in the day, you're not allowed to camp within three miles of copper. So just hang out there for a little while, have a beer, hang out, just kind of wait for the sun to go down a little bit, then hike in until it's legal to camp. There's a lot of camping by a lot of creeks and crossings there. So spend a little time at copper, take a break, charge up your cell phones if you need to get some food. They've got a couple of places where you can get some food. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, but basically I think that hanging out at copper is a really great plan. There is good flat camping. And it is legal at the very bottom of the segment before you get to the highway, there's a river that kind of passes by the highway, runs parallel. And there, there are a couple of camp spots there that are legal to camp there. Um, they're in the data book. That's how we know that they're legal. And as Mad Hippies point out too, if you are hiking with a dog, the summit stage is dog friendly. As long as your dog is leashed and well behaved, you are good to go there, which is a really nice way to give your pup a break and make sure that they are not, um, they're not having a tough time and your dogs will get tired. They will, they will get really tuckered out there. So that's segment seven. 
it is just, it's fantastic. I love it, but I also find it really frustrating at different points and really difficult depending on where you are in the day. It's also worth knowing that if you're one of the early morning hikers or the early season, not morning hikers, there is a really difficult sort of precipice that you'll have to cross, which will likely be covered in snow. Um, and it's really, really, it, it can be kind of, um, sketchy so pay attention actually watch girl plus dog adventures video on this hike on segment seven and you'll see them trying to cross a snowbank in a much less snowy year and it was it was pretty sketchy so just be aware of that all in all though that top of the 10 mile range is so very worth it that by the time you get there i think you're going to love it that's segment eight everybody <laughs>